We're gonna have to make this one quick, guys. I'm right outside the historical museum in what used to be Mandarin, Florida, which is now part of Jacksonville. But inside this building here is the artifacts from the Civil War ship that was sunk by mines in Mandarin Point, uh, the, the river. Um, now, they would, they would normally be closed right now, but um, the, one of the, the tour guys is giving a private tour, so she allowed me to come in here briefly on a closed day and go ahead and take some video. Um, so, let's see what we got in here. I would really like to come back a, during a time when I can uh, really focus on this a little bit more. Okay, this, this is one of the Civil War floating mines. Amazing that it actually worked. Okay, let's see. During the Civil War, the technology of weapons and warfare made great leaps forward. Originally called torpedoes, the, the underwater mines had been in existence since the Revolutionary War, but had never been employed in great success. The use of mines was initially viewed as contrary to civilized warfare uh, due to the manner in which they indiscriminately sunk ships and the stealth with which they did so. Fighting a defensive war and lack of strong navy, the Confederacy readily turned to mines as an inexpensive way to reduce Union advantage. The effectiveness of the strategy can be seen in the 27, 27 Union vessels sank and an additional unknown number of ships damaged by Confederate mines over the course of the war. The highly sensitive Confederate corporate bureau carried out much of its mine building operation in Charleston, South Carolina, with the members required to take an oath of silence uh, about the mines and their location. So there you go guys. This was not the only ship sank in the Civil War by floating mines. It was only one of 27, as well as a lot of others that were damaged. All right, we got some pictures here. Um, so the name of this ship that was sunk and then excavated is called the Maple Leaf. And there's some, you can see there's divers down here. So this was one that was had to be excavated completely underwater. And uh, this is the way it looked on the sea floor. All right, and here it is. Um, this is actually looks like a steamship. It is. What am I saying? It looks like this is a steamship. Okay, this one gives a little more detail about the Maple Leaf. And as you can see, the Maple Leaf is actually a steamship uh, with the wheels on either side, which is similar to the Ticonderosa that we saw in um, in Vermont. Uh, that was a, a family trip that we saw that. And so, in the early hours of April first, eighteen and sixty four. So this would have been near the end of the war. The uh, steamboat Maple Leaf struck a Confederate mine off the Mandarin Point and sank, least as all the Union Army transports transport the ship's 400 tons of cargo rested forgotten, undisturbed, and perfectly preserved in the mud for well over a century. The the uh, volume and variety of the artifacts on board the Maple Leaf made her the single greatest repository of Civil War artifacts in the world, with only a small percentage of the goods having ever been recovered. More than just the Maple Leaf's final resting place made her an important part of local history, and she was piloted by a local man, sunk by a local man, and later discovered by local men. So this story in the Maple Leaf is uh, very much a part of this area of Mandarin, Florida.
the Maple Leaf was, as I say, used at least as a Union Army transport. So I'm not sure exactly how many uh, actual soldiers were on board, but there was a, apparently, a large cargo of Union supplies aboard. Matchsticks. Some actual matchsticks. Block of matches. Boy, that's really preserved. Uh, tobacco pipes and a playing flute. Uh, it's something called a brass fife. Uh, some dice, playing dice. Right here. The 20 pound parrot shell. Well, that's all we're going to be able to see uh, with the, the maple leaf and the sinking sinking of the maple leaf today. Guys, You y'all are learning at the same time that I am in this case. I didn't read ahead at all, and uh, I was very crunched for time, so I couldn't go around and read the plaques before I started the video. So, <laughs> uh, I apologize for the, um, the wing it kind of nature of this vlog, but still very fascinating. I would not have imagined there was that many uh, floating mines manufactured for the Civil War and used to that that amount of effectiveness. 27 sunk ships. Wow. Just wow.